every InDesign tool in under 10 minutes. When you had created your InDesign document, you will find all the tools in the toolbar over here on the left side. Let's explore each of them. The first tool is Selection Tool. It has the shape of mouse cursor and outline mouse cursor. Shortcut key is V. You can use this tool to select and move the objects around the page. You can also resize and rotate the objects. Next tool is Direct Selection Tool. It has the shape of mouse cursor as well. Shortcut key is A. You can use this tool to move the path and handles of vector objects. You can even click the anchor points of grouped items. Although in Adobe Illustrator, Direct Selection Tool is capable of rounding the shape corners. However, the same tool does not work the same in Adobe InDesign. Next tool is Page Tool. Shortcut key is Shift P. You can use this tool to change the page size and orientation. Then we have Gap Tool. Shortcut key is U. You can use this tool to add spaces and gaps between the objects, text and images. To learn more about the Gap Tool, the tutorial link is present in the description. Next tool is Content Collector Tool. Shortcut key is B. Use this tool to collect the content from different pages in InDesign document. Once you select this tool, Conveyor Belt will show up at the bottom of the screen. If that doesn't happen, then go to View, Extra, and choose Show Conveyor. Shortcut key is Alt-B. In this Conveyor Belt, use this Content Collector tool to add the items in the clipboard. Next tool is Content Place Tool. Shortcut key is B. Press B once again and then you will get Content Collector Tool. And press B once again. Then you will get Content Place Tool. You can switch between them. In this conveyor belt, use Content Place Tool to paste the items to other InDesign document. So basically, you can copy the items from one document using Content Collector Tool. And then paste those items to other document using Content Place Tool. Next tool is Text Tool. Shortcut key is T. Of course, this tool is used to type the text. For example, letters, characters, and numbers. Also, when your text tool is selected, you can draw the text frame on the page. That will contain all of your content. If you expand this text frame, the remaining text will show up. And if you reduce the text frame, the text will hide. Unless you want it to continue to the other page. Next tool is Line Tool. Shortcut key is backslash. Use this tool to draw the lines on the pages vertically, horizontally, and diagonally. Next tool is pen tool. Shortcut key is P. The most famous tool that is found in every graphic design software, whether Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, and Corel Draw. Use this tool to draw the paths of a straight line or curved lines on the page. It uses anchor points and handles to draw the objects. Keep in mind, Pen Tool works different in Photoshop, Illustrator and InDesign. To know those differences, check out the tutorial that I had added in the description. Also, note down, lesser the anchor points, smoother is the curve. Now, when you right click on the Pen Tool, it will expand, showing you more tools related to Pen Tool. Next tool is Add Anchor Point Tool. Shortcut key is Equal button. Use this tool to add anchor points to the existing vector shape on the page. Let's say this is square. It has 4 anchor points on the corners. With this tool, I can add more anchor points so that I can manipulate the shape as much as I want. Next tool is Delete Anchor Points. Shortcut key is Minus. Use this tool to remove anchor points from the existing vector shapes that are not useful. So, let's click on the anchor points on the square. You see, now this shape is a triangle. Next tool is Convert Direction Point Tool. Shortcut key is Shift C. Use this tool to move the anchor points. You can transform this rectangle into trapezium just by moving these anchor points with this tool. Next tool is Pencil Tool. Shortcut key is N. Use this tool to draw the open and close path on the page. 
it feels like you are actually drawing with a pencil on a paper. Next tool is Smooth Tool. Unfortunately, it has no shortcut key. Use this tool to smoothen the path. This path is redrawn with fewer anchor points. Next tool is Erase Tool. Use this tool to cut the shapes in half and form new paths. Next tool is Rectangle Frame Tool. Shortcut key is F. Use this tool to place the graphics or images inside it. It will display a large X to act as a placeholder. If you cannot see the X, press Ctrl H. Now, drag and drop any image you want. In similar fashion, you can do for Ellipse Frame Tool and Polygon Frame Tool. Next tool is Rectangle Tool. Shortcut key is M. Now, this is used for drawing rectangles on the page. You can also add an image into the rectangle, just like the Rectangle Frame Tool. Although they function the same, it only helps the non-designers to understand that this frame is actually a frame holder, where they should put their graphic and contain. Next tool is Ellipse Tool. Shortcut key is L. With this tool, you can draw circles. Then we have Polygon Tool. This is the function of Polygon Tool. Next tool is Scissor Tool. Use this tool to split an open path into two independent elements. Next tool is Free Transform Tool. Shortcut key is E. Use this tool to scale up or scale down any graphic on the page. You can even rotate the objects. Next tool is Rotate Tool. Shortcut key is R. Use this tool to rotate the objects. This one is little bit different from Free Transform Tool. It shows the rotation point around the graphic. So, if I place this point far away from the square, the square will rotate against the distance from the rotation point. If I bring this point to its corner, the square rotates with respect to that axis. Next tool is Scale Tool. Shortcut key is S. Use this tool to scale up or scale down the graphics with respect to the axis point. Next tool is Shear Tool. Shortcut key is O. Use this tool to skew the graphics with respect to the axis point. Next tool is Gradient Tool. Shortcut key is G. Use this tool to draw the gradients inside the shapes. Colors can be changed anytime in the gradient panel. Next tool is Gradient Feather Tool. Shortcut key is Shift G. It fades any solid or gradient object from right to left, left to right, top to bottom, and bottom to top. It blends the color with transparency. Next tool is Note. Use this tool to add comments and feedback. Later, when you make any changes, you can track them easily. Next tool is Color Theme Tool. Shortcut key is Shift I. Use this tool to generate color themes by extracting the color from images, objects, and other graphics in the document. Next tool is Eyedropper Tool. Use this tool to transfer the sample color and other properties from one object to other. Next tool is Measure Tool. Shortcut key is K. Use this tool to calculate the distance between any two points in the document window. Next tool is Hand Tool. Shortcut key is H. Use this tool to navigate the document by clicking and dragging the artboard. You can also use the spacebar for navigation. Next tool is Zoom Tool. Shortcut key is Z. Use this tool to magnify the view of the objects of your focus. Then we have Fill and Stroke. Shortcut key is X. You can switch between Fill and Stroke just by pressing X on your keyboard. When you select the fill, this fill shape comes forward. When you select the stroke, the stroke shape comes forward. With fill selected, you can give any color to your vector objects in your document. With stroke selected, you can give outline to your vector objects in your document. You can swap the colors by clicking on these dual arrows. Or just press Shift X on your keyboard. This small icon can restore your fill and stroke to default colors. Then we have these tools. Formatting Effects Container and formatting effects text. Shortcut key is J. Let's draw a box. I am giving it green color. I am typing a text inside this box. Jawad Sumro. When I press J, I will be able to change the text color. When I press J once again, 
I will be able to change the box's color rather than the text. Then we have these three tools. Fill, Gradient and No Fill. If you want your object to have solid color, choose Fill. If you want your object to have gradient, then choose Gradient. If you don't want any kind of solid and even gradient, choose Apply None. Then at the end, we have Preview Tool. You can preview your document in normal mode. Shortcut key is W. Currently, my document is in normal mode. You can switch to other modes as well. Preview, Bleed, Slug and Presentation. This Presentation Preview mode works just like Microsoft PowerPoint Presentation. So, forget the PowerPoint. InDesign got you. I hope this tutorial helped you learn all the InDesign tools in under 10 minutes. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I will reply you as soon as possible. You can email me at javasumro1988 at gmail.com. Follow my Facebook page over here, Javasumro Productions. Follow my Instagram page over here, Javasumro Studios. If you want to see more tutorials like this, make sure you subscribe. If you enjoyed this tutorial, smash that like button and share this video with your friends. If you never want to miss any updates, click that notification bell icon. Now, I will see you in the next tutorial. Goodbye and take care.